right, so I would like to invite uh, Oliver Litz uh, from Nano Cosmos online. Hi, Oliver. How are you? Hi, Zoltan. Thank you very much. I'm good. Good. So we can um, kickstart your presentation then. Yeah, sure. And then uh, it goes about 10 minutes and then we'll have a short chat afterwards. Exactly. Hello everybody, my name is Oliver, I'm the CEO and founder from NanoCosmos. We provide an ultra low latency live streaming platform called NanoStream Cloud. I will share some use cases around interactive live streaming, what that is and how you can solve technical challenges around this. What all these applications have in common is they are interactive, they are low latency by any audience size in the world with a global scale browser-based and can be integrated into custom web applications for B2B branded usage. I will also put the focus a bit on hybrid events. As in the last two years, everybody was live online only, mostly from home and no one on stage. Now slowly events are coming back to stage again with physical presence. And the hybrid use case is here to stay where both physical attendees and online attendees are available at the same time. I see two main scenarios for interactive live streaming where audience engagement is really key. Scenario one is live events. They all have a similar setup. There is a presenter or a group of presenters and an audience which would like to interact with the presenters. The presenters can be either on stage or online or both, which I would call hybrid. This is different to traditional broadcast applications where you are maybe sitting on a couch or in a lean back scenario enjoying and watching a stream. It's more like a lean forward activity where the audience is really doing something, interacting with the presenter group. Some use cases are webcasting, remote presentations, e-learning, which can be in enterprise environments, business environments. It can be panel discussions, political discussions, town hall meetings, or entertainment events like Knife Musics. And all these use cases have several things in common. They are scalable to any audience size, they are accessible on any browser, on any device very easily. The target latency is very low, around one second end-to-end, -end, glass to glass. And they also have a monetized business case behind it, which require the interactivity and which require low latency live streaming. Scenario number two is a bit different. It's not based on specific larger events for larger audiences. It's more based on a recurring event type of um, application where you have a revenue channel, uh, recurring revenue channel, monetized content based on uh, monetized video and uh, an act business activity behind that. That could be uh, live auctions, live betting, live games, or even live retail where you have a sales channel. And they have similar requirements as the event-based model. It needs to be at a global scale, any audience size, easy to use as well. Um, in these uh, applications, it's more and more use, used to have mobile first approach. That means that mo many or most uh, part of the audience is on mobile and on the browser to directly access the event or the live stream. It needs to be very robust, 100% SLA is the aim to really keep the recurring um, revenue channel running all the time. But let's first go into more detail about the event use case, because that's very exciting as we are more and more going hybrid. So these cases can be webcasts, conferences, town hall meetings, podium discussions, wherever someone is sharing something on stage or online. So it can be can be live on stage with people sitting on a, on a venue or on, uh, on a stage and discussing something, or it can be completely online like we are now in this conference here. Or it can be a mixed setup, so it can be hybrid, a mixture of physical presence and online presence. And the event then is to be shared with a live audience, which can be of any audience size anywhere in the world, which can join the discussion, which can interact, which can ask questions, give any feedback to this session. Let's give an example. A large corporation, 2,000 employees, five locations in the world. Everybody in the, uh, in, the, in the company is supposed to join and interact with the presenters. So how can this be organized? I can see two challenges here. First of all, it needs to be very robust, so you can't lose anybody. Everybody needs to stay connected, have a stable video connection on their device. And number two, immediate interaction, which means you need to really have low latency and a stable 
live stream on your device to be able to um, support this interactive live stream experience. That means ultra low latency around the world in about one second. And last but not least, of course, it needs to be easy to use, not only for the audience, which should be able to join on the browser by directly opening their, their browser and, and, and internet access device, but also the production preparation and overhead should be low. So the whole event is able to be prepared, cost efficient and easy to use and lightweight somehow. Let's have a look at podium discussion. There is a live situation on stage with several panelists. This event then is sent as a live stream to a global audience. Viewers can join the discussion from anywhere in the world on any device in the browser. They can ask questions and interact with the presenters at any time. And the presenters can directly react to the questions which are asked by the audience. Here you see an example which is done by the additional tool Slido which is a great tool to sharing questions and give feedback to an audience to the presenters. Here's another example. It's an expert hearing. So also something like a podium discussion, but somehow the opposite because no one is on stage here. Everybody is online, somehow in their own home office. It's a virtual meeting like this conference is now. So this then is shared as a live stream to a global audience and the great thing is about the user experience here is good because you have everything in the browser. You have the video conference in the browser, you have the interaction in the browser. Everybody can ask questions and directly interact with the presenters. This example here was an expert hearing by the European Parliament Group um, about Google and Apple experts sharing technology behind the COVID-19 tracing app technology. They were using Zoom as a conference tool which also works very well, which can be combined to a live streaming platform, which then is shared on a web page to interact with the global audience. And the audience then does not need Zoom anymore. What I might find most, most exciting is some of the hybrid use case, which is a combination of physical presence and online presence. So you have someone on stage or several people on stage and they are combined by people joining from the online space. So in this case, you see that there is one person on stage and several people uh, joining online. It's a great user experience also for the audience because uh, you both both the uh, panelists, uh, all, the, all the panelists are seen on the on the screen and the audience then can additionally interact with the whole presentation um, setup by sharing that in the browser, adding Q&A sessions, giving feedback, whatever interaction is required for these things. Here you see an example for a full integrated event management platform. This is based on the Open Slides platform, which is an open source platform, but hosted by a commercial provider, which can provide uh, live event management around this. So you have management tools like uh, speaker lists, voting, chat, things like that. And you additionally have the possibility to add live streams and live communication to the system to enable interactive live streaming to large audiences. This is also a good example to see how easy it is to integrate our NanoStream solution into a complex event management platform. The audience can be unlimited, browser-based. We don't care if it's 5,000, 10,000 or more participants. And this is then all branded for B2B applications. It needs to be very stable, robust. Uh, high SLA is very important. Integrated into the business environments, accessible on any device. Very important for business applications, privacy and security concerns, so we can comply to GDPR and other regulations. So it can be any uh, important business content like industrial things, steel, construction, legal or medical content. And the focus is really on getting the audio video content transferred in a robust and reliable way, no matter where the audience is located and on which device they are accessing this. Let's now have a look at different use cases, live music and live concerts. Live events like these have, a, have suffered quite a lot in the pandemic in the last months and years. And the industry is really looking for additional revenue streams and how they can monetize the content and still reach their fans and give a great user experience. That's a great example here as it creates new ways of fan engagement with added value to the live stream. 
Live performances are not only on stage anymore with live fans, but also sent from home, from bedroom, living room concerts in a small environment and shared with the audience. And how can you create a better user experience and fan experience? With a low latency live stream, the artists can connect to the audience and fans, and they can give feedback directly in form of comments and questions. That's a really good example also for the hybrid use case. The artist directly connects to the fans. They have a video feed. It's a video communication directly between fans and artists. They can be part of the communication and this whole um, event is then shared with a large audience which still can be part of the event and also interact with the presenter. So it's, it's a great new setup which is in this case was hosted by Live Nation, a live concert agency. The performer was on stage in Europe and the fans were located all around the world. It was primarily in North Africa, so it was very difficult to get people directly to the venues and to live concerts in these days. But it was a great benefit and great value for the organizers, for the performers and also for the fans to have this setup running and with direct connection and fan engagement between the performer and the audience. In a similar setup, fans can also directly text the artist and also buy things, send likes and comments, but donate, do donations, small amounts of money, buy merchandise during the show. And this also enables new ways of monetizing the live video content. I will also shortly touch other ways of monetizing live video content with specific business vertical solutions, which are then having a monetized video channel for every bidder. So that's applications like live auctions, betting and gaming. Uh, the remote interaction is already happening for a while already for live auctions. The, even in the past, people were dialing in to the agents and to the agency doing bids by telephone, but now that's possible with video interaction. And this can all be done online now. In the left part, you see an example setup which we do with partners in Australia who do high volume and high value sales of real estates directly from mobile phones. So what is needed to create interactive live streaming applications? Let me go a bit into more detail here. You need several things. To make a live content interactive, you need a reliable streaming platform for, with a global approach, which is fully under your control end to end and which supports the ultra low latency live streaming service which you require for your interactive use cases. The basics of an interactive live streaming is this network and additionally the player which is running on all devices. So you open up the browser, you directly see the live stream and the live stream then connects to the closest location in the cloud on the network which you, your provider has. This approach needs to be available 24-7, 365 on any time, anywhere in the world. Nanostream Cloud is really unique as a combination of software and services for ultra low latency live streaming for interactive use cases because it has the network, the global CDN for ultra low latency live delivery at any scale anywhere in the world. It has the player, very lightweight, easy to embed on any web application. Additionally, it has really good tools for getting insight into the quality of service. We provide a metrics and analytics service for that. We have flexible ingest options so you can connect any camera, any live ingest, live encoding software or service or hardware to the platform. And we have a very unique live transcoding adaptive bitrate control in the player built in which adjusts automatically to the best possible quality of the network available to any device anywhere in the world even in hostile network situations. So this combination of software and services makes us really re unique. To really get full insight into the quality of service, we created this metrics and analytics platform. So we collect metrics from the players, from our so servers, anywhere in the world. So it's good to get an insight onto the quality of service for our support team, but also for you as, as a customer have some business intelligence about the number of viewers, the volume, quality of service in different regions, and also any impact on the quality of service like buffering, which really would kill the user experience, 
or bad network situations. And uh, so you get a full, full insight into the QoS and QoE for your live streaming application. The adaptive bitrate player I mentioned automatically adjusts to the right quality available in the network. So we send several renditions out to the network, similar as other adaptive bitrate systems, but optimized for ultra low latency. And the player automatically connects to the right quality level available in the network on the device you are using or your audience is using. Here you see a test setup running, which I do myself, a real life setup. I send a live stream from a mobile phone and uh, the playback is done in low latency on several devices at the same time. So that really shows the experience with the hand wave gesture of ultra low latency live streaming. NanoPlayer is really easy to embed and use on your own web page. You just need some lines of JavaScript code, which you can copy paste to your web page, and then this live stream runs under your brand on your own web page application. It can even be yet simpler with just one line. You can copy paste an iframe into your web page that can be used for using live streaming within WordPress or any other content management system where you don't need any web development and just can just copy a small code snippet into your page. It's really easy to get started when you use a free live encoder software. You can start live streaming from your own webcam. We support using the OBS Open Broadcaster software, Open Broadcaster Studio, which is an open source development and which can be downloaded for free. We also sponsor this software, it is running very reliable and also for low latency live streaming. So try it out and try yourself and learn how you can use ultra low live streaming very easily on your own web page. We have several pricing options, very simple pricing based on packages, uh, based on streaming volume and additional options and support packages are, are available so we can guarantee certain uh, SLAs and support activities around your events or 24-7 live streams. Thanks a lot for joining my presentation. Hope to see you soon and reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you and goodbye. Well, dear audience, I told you we were going to kick it down a little bit, but but this was very technical. So Oliver, I, I prepared some questions for you uh, because this sounds very interesting. Uh, we will definitely contact you in when we start doing our hybrid events. So what is the biggest challenge building a low latency live streaming solution? Yeah, well, you're right. So it was uh, very techy. We are a technology provider. That's true. And we try to make <laughs> it as, <laughs> but we, we try to make it as simple as possible to integrate this uh, hard technology. So video technology is really hard to control and live streaming, especially with uh, this uh, low latency for interactive use cases, like it's in gaming and betting. So um, as our expertise goes back to the 90s, where we were working with uh, TV broadcast environments, there are still a lot of challenges coming to us uh, these days. And um, but we, we are learning and we, we had some interesting learnings, of course. And uh, one thing is that we noticed that it's really, really important to understand uh, the, the whole use case and to have end-to-end -to -end control of the whole workflow. So what would you like to accomplish? And um, what would you like to deliver in the best user experience for the end users? So you need to have some compromises sometimes in bad networks, hostile networks, old devices all around the world. So you never control everything for um, consumer uh, gaming, which can be anywhere. But that's something which, uh, which, uh, which you can get uh, into control and where you need some data and collect some metrics and get some analytics to get more in information about the system, how it's working in any region of the world, and uh, even add some kind of business intelligence to your 
to your platform for the games that uh, you can improve your outreach. Okay, and you most probably have a lot of interactive use cases. And what did you? What is your most important uh, learning from all these use cases? So it's interesting to see all these different use cases and in different industries. So they are all completely different somehow, but of course based on a similar setup uh, in the core. And uh, many of them, as the approach is to make it as easy as possible to access them to that uh, more and more applications are moving to the browser space. So you just uh, open your handset, open your mobile phone, uh, open your browser and would like to immediately access the live event. Is it a game or any anything else? And that should be, of course, working on any device or wherever you are, if you're on a bad network. So um, we are both in Europe, but uh, in Germany, you might be surprised how bad the public network still is. So that, there's a lot of challenges around that to keep the uh, um, user experience high. And we usually take a kind of holistic approach to understand really the whole use case, what you would like to accomplish, and then create the best operating point for that. So you, you shortly touched it also. Uh, one of the learnings, of course, in the last year is that this hybrid model with these uh, virtual meetings, which we do now here in Zoom, and um, combining things like enterprise and public applications is, is also very interesting. Um, we, are, we are now here in this uh, Zoom channel. Some of the audience is in YouTube, uh, but still uh, that's kind of closed environment somehow and bringing that all together in a browser space where you have your own branding, your own white label integration, you create your own uh, licensed uh, platform for that. And that very much more enables you to monetize your content, of course, um, when you are away, keep away from these large platforms, which are somehow for free, but where you are somewhat distracted from your own business goals. And that's, that's one of the learnings as well, to really mm -hmm. understand what business-wise you would like to create um, to monetize your services that uh, you somehow need to earn money, of course. Uh, in the iGaming industry, it's clear you would like to have a paid service by, by the bets usually, taking the bets, but there are other things like um, combined approaches, like adding um, betting to sports events, which are usually for free, but the bets should be paid. So there are different use cases and business models around that. that and, and it's important to understand what and to have a clear understanding and clear, clear plan about your monetization goals. Yeah, we were lucky enough to, uh, to, to test the hybrid model last year in uh, August with our conference in Tallinn, uh, which was really, really hard to do because we had uh, somebody on the ground in the, in the hotel room and we were doing things via TeamViewer, uh, connecting the, the, <laughs> the conference hall to, to Jitsi and then to YouTube and having the audience engaging with the speakers in the, in the room. It was really hard. But I, yeah, I, I know that we, we need a better provider for the next year. <laughs> so uh, now, right now, we're uh, at, the, at the Gaming Americas meeting. And in two weeks, you are also going to join us for the European one, but the, which, which leads me to a question. Uh, in which markets do you currently operate in, and, and do you plan to expand in the future? Yeah, sure. Uh, expansion is uh, planned for us in kind of organic growth. So we are still a kind of small company with a uh, team size of around 30. Headquarters are in Europe, but we have aimed at the global scale from the beginning. We are very strong in uh, certain areas in North America as well already. Several business customers, uh, not only in iGaming, but also in business webcasts. Uh, we see iGaming is very strong in Asia. It's growing in South America but also, of course, in the uh, North American and European uh, areas, uh, especially when it comes to uh, live auctions and betting, which is a bit different, in, uh, as we see, compared to the casino games. And um, it was very interesting to uh, hear your last session about the legislations, which create a lot of challenges, of course, but also a lot of opportunities. So we see that uh, changing in, the, in Europe especially in Germany, but also in the whole of Europe, but also in the United States, as we just heard, all states have different legislations currently, but uh, that creates uh, several opportunities for growth. Uh, for, and uh, so it's, uh, it's very interesting to see that. And as you mentioned, the technology challenges, so they never disappear. And uh, you might be surprised to see when you have um, 
providers like Amazon or Netflix, where you are used to 4K high quality video, that in these video com communication interaction uh, web based things, it might might be a bit disappointing in the first step, but uh, it's just something different. So it's uh, completely different applications, and it's a challenge and, and remains a challenge uh, to to keep that uh, growing in uh, in highest quality. Yeah, I think yesterday it was Domenico Mazzola from Altenar who on the Latin American conference said that maybe in the future we will see Amazon uh, becoming also a, a, a betting provider, uh, I mean betting operator or a casino. Uh, and uh, coming to the casino side, I would like to ask, uh, where do you see the evolution of live casino heading? Because I think that there's a lot of innovation coming in there with uh, with this uh, low latency streaming. Yes, I, I think it is, and I think it's uh, it's it's going well in the future. There there will be growth and opportunities for that. Uh, as I said, based also on opening legislations and possibilities, both technology wise and um, also legally. And um, the, uh, the techni technical challenges are still there, but um, the avail availability of uh, high bandwidth networks, 5G, et cetera, good uh, handsets. Everyone is using a mobile phone and using uh, internet uh, everywhere while commuting in buses or wherever they are. So they can be part of these uh, casino games, not by only going to a land-based casino, but just playing a game in between and be be part of that uh, audience growth uh, generally. And um, legally, I see also the what was also discussed in other sessions already, this kind of responsible gaming approach or keeping in line with legal and moral standards and uh, keeping that up with the expected um, yeah, public opinion somehow and make it, uh, make it properly work, um, both legally and technically. That makes a lot of sense. And if you keep that under control somehow, then you have a lot of uh, chances to to grow. Got it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that in the past years, really, Live Casino has been doing a, a huge growth. But uh, how how has the the pandemic affected this growth? Uh, I mean, in the live casino sector. I think we have seen we have seen growth on our platform. So as we are a generic uh, live streaming provider, we see it by uh, our growth of our uh, customers, which are so there is operators. there is still a growth. Yes, I see. We see that growing. Um, of course, it was uh, jumping up during the pandemic, but uh, still, and the acceptance is getting higher for this uh, video-based technologies. Everyone is used to that, uh, doing video communication and video-based things. And the trust on having a live uh, dealer in, in, a, in a stream is uh, much higher than doing a virtual game, in my opinion. So I think it's, uh, it's something which creates a lot of value for the operators to make that and to extend their services being either kind of whatever it's called uh, over the top, over the table camera of uh, land-based land casinos, um, but also studio-based casinos, which are also growing uh, anywhere in the world. Okay, so we now see that the op the, the the world is opening up, or uh, it might be closing up again. But uh, either way, uh, there has been a substantial period of isolation, which uh, has boosted the, the the player acquisition in the online sphere. And uh, I just want to ask you, what preparations have you made uh, to retain these players? We enjoyed the connectivity of playing uh, online, but now may gradually expand uh, to offline options uh, where they can play. Yeah, of course, you need to stay on top of innovations generally. So both we as a platform provider, as a live streaming platform provider, we need to keep the quality of the uh, video content very high, as high as possible. You need to stay competitive, both in technology and also pricing, of course, uh, so our customers can afford going live because every stream also costs money. Every player needs to um, needs to stream and that uh, costs some some cents at least per participant. And uh, the providers, the operators them themselves also need to stay uh, innovative somehow and create new games, new um, experiences, which are not only one-to-one, -one, the land-based uh, replication, but also new ideas, new gaming ideas 
And there's a lot of um, potential I see here to also be creative and to create innovations by combining different approaches. The general, the gaming space is, is huge. Let's say the uh, computer gaming space, the mobile gaming space, and combining these things, maybe these ideas with uh, uh, with uh, eye gaming uh, is also something which has uh, still potential to grow. Okay, yeah, and and there's a. a consistent demand for change and innovation. And, and I, I just want to ask, uh, uh, have, do we have to worry about Baccarat, or Roulette, uh, the classic games uh, uh, disappearing in time? I mean, how do you balance the need to stay true to these classic games uh, with the expectation of the, ses- of the sector consistently demanding change and innovation? So are, are, are this, is there a balance still in this? I think so. So I think it's um, it's different, um, let's say, audiences. Uh, so um, the kind of classical games are more like maybe traditional, a bit elderly, <laughs> might be. Uh, simple games, everyone knows, knows the rules, and uh, new games coming uh, coming up are more experimental, and people like like to try new things and to try new new kinds of uh, user experiences on their devices so i think it's still room for both and uh, the uh, it doesn't disappear the kind of classical games uh, if uh, new games are evolving so there's enough room for both both types got it got it and and, and just one more question before i head to ryan uh, what are the advantages of uh, of your cloud solutions yeah well um, we we as based on our experience so we have um, been started as an engineering company for the video broadcast industry we have created our technology by on our own so we have everything under control which is a large benefit to um, to en- to enable and to provide this technology and um, we are very competitive also on pricing so it's a very efficient um, and robust technology which can be implemented anywhere and the combination of features and functions of our uh, solution is in my opinion quite unique so it's not only the technology we are in close collaboration with our customers we try to understand their requirements and collaboration and um, bring the best options together so they really create a successful uh, business okay thank you so uh, this has been oliver uh, leeds from Nanocosmos. Uh, Oliver, do stay here because uh, my next guest...